Hey guys, just got done watching 1984's A Nightmare on Elm Street. That's right, in this terrible box set. I prefer having the this separate when I do a review. I don't like having to show the same box, so please excuse me for showing the same box seven times over the reviews. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street's a West Craven film and it stars... John Saxon, Ronnie Blakely, Heather Langkamp, and Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is actually quite in it quite a lot, actually. When you think of it, this is one of his first roles. It's quite amazing because, well, you know, Johnny Depp. Do I like Johnny Depp? No. Do I care about Johnny Depp? No. But it's always good to see where people start. I mean, he was in 21 Jump Street, the series as well, weren't they? So anyway. No Mile Street 1. So, basically we start off with this girl walking down the corridor. And then she ends up walking in this kind of boiler room place. And that girl is Christina Tina Gray, who's played by Amanda Weiss. And basically what happens is she wakes up and she basically tells her friends about her dream the next day at school. Uh, Rod, who's her boyfriend, goes up early and says he's got a nice thick one for her. Well, a nice hard one, right? Thought I'd add that in now. I thought that was a classic line. And um, Nancy says she had a she, but she had a really bad dream too. But she can't remember what happened in it. So long story short, that same that same day, the day after, Glenn Johnny Depp that stays over with Nancy and Tina, and Rod turns up and takes her in the bedroom. Takes Tina in the bedroom because they're going to have sex. Johnny Depp, Glenn, is basically making out with Nancy because she won't sleep with him and stuff. And then basically you see him laying there listening to Tina and Rod having sex. And he's like, just my luck. So after they've had sex, that's when the good stuff happens. Because Tina, she gets butchered. So basically, she ends up outside going, who's there? And Freddy Krueger comes running with his long arms and his small head. And do you know what? It reminded me of Pinhead from um, Puppet Master. And I thought to myself, Puppet Master didn't start, I don't think, to 1990. I know it started a while after Nightmare on Elm Street. So I wonder if Charles Brown got the idea for Pinhead from that scene. Because he's got the long arms and he's got a smaller body. And a small head. So that was just an observation. So basically, long story short, she uh, ends up flying in the air, up there, blood spurting. Rod goes, ah, I'm going to get you, you bastards, and, uh, when no one's there. And he escapes, and later on he ends up getting arrested by John Saxon, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Donald Thompson, a.k.a. Nancy's dad. So basically, Nancy starts going through these dream scenarios with Freddy, or at the time, Fred Krueger. And basically, there's one bit where she falls asleep in the class and she sees her friend in a bag going, Ugh, and follows her being pulled down the hallway, and she ends up in the boiler room. And Freddy's like, well, hey, and he's jumping around trying to get her, and she burns herself to wake up. She goes out to school when she realises the burn actually hurt her in reality. So that she learns that it does actually hurt and it actually is real what's happening. So later on she basically asks Glenn to keep an eye on her and basically he, he, he falls asleep. And they go and visit Rod and Rod's like, I didn't do it. I didn't do it because I'm just a good for nothing wannabe uh, rock and roller. Right? And basically, they go to see him again, and she begs her father, Donald, to make sure he's okay. Because she know she in one of her dreams beforehand, she saw Freddy going over him and laughing. I got he he he. So basically, they go down. He's hung himself well to their eyes, and he's dead. He's like, <laughs> so that was good. She gets upset. Glenn gets upset. Glenn's in this movie way too long. He should have died second, in my view. All I kept doing was thinking Captain Jack Sparrow. Yes. The worst ones. 
And uh, what else happens? I remember it quite clearly. Oh, her mother. Her mother who's played by Ronnie Ronnie Blakely. What a creepy mother. Oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, one, an alcoholic. And then, oh, and then there's a scene where Nancy says to her dad and her mum, he, he wears this red, dirty sweater with stripes and a hat. And they go like this. And you know they're hiding something. You know they know something. And her mum starts drinking more and her dad starts going, mmm, more. And basically Glenn ends up falling asleep when he should have helped her and he ends up sucked in and killed. And there's a scene in the film, it's a very iconic scene, I know, but I'm sure he got the idea from Deadly Blessing, which is another one of Wes Craven's films. And from 19, I think it was 80 or 81. I'm sure he got the idea for that bathtub scene from that, but to change it up with Freddy come, with hands coming out instead of the snake, because it's a very similar setting, an almost exact same kind of uh, thing, just different, if you get what I mean. So I'm sure that was from Deadly Blessing. That gave Deadly Blessing gave him that idea because it was his own film in the first place. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, the hand. And uh, so Glenn gets it. Glenn goes. <whistles> it goes through the middle of the bed and then blood strikes up on the ceiling and he's dead. So the police are over there and he goes, he, he calls her dad up. She goes, dad. You wake me up by half past twelve. And I'll have Freddy. And you're like, okay. And her head's going grey because of all the stress and because of what's happening to her. Oh, she gets taken to a sleep clinic where she falls asleep as a nightmare. When she wakes up, she's got Freddy Krueger's hat in her hand. So she believes she can bring him out in the real world. So he goes, okay, dear, okay, whatever, basically. He doesn't give a shit. He thinks she's, he thinks she's imagining it all. So... She uh she basically goes to sleep and she wakes up thanks to her alarm clock and Freddy Krueger's in there with her. And it's a good end scene. I like the ending, but I need to go back just a little bit. Nancy's mum Marge tells her about what happened to Fred Krueger. Basically, he was arrested and because they didn't have a warrant, the right warrant at the right time, he got away with it. And so the parents, because he was a child killer, he killed at least 20 kids. They decided to set the place on fire. The boiler room he was in and basically finished the job off. Now, I don't blame them. I think I'd be a part of that mob if it was me. So, you know, but obviously it affected them all because they killed someone. So, basically, at the end, the very end, I heard the ending was actually changed because I, I did read what the original ending was, but I can't remember what it was right now. But um, the ending is so easily a dream. It's like she goes out and she goes to him. She goes to him before this. I know the truth now, Freddy. I know the truth. You can't hurt me because it's all in my imagination. It's all a dream. She opens the door, he goes for her, and then he vanishes. Uh, like he's been teleported up to the Star Trek Enterprise. Do, 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 right? And. Um, then it shows her walking out, and it being all foggy outside, her mum talking to her, being alive, her friends being alive in the car, she jumps in, Freddy Krueger's signature uh, sweater goes over the top, you know, it's the car roof colour, and it drives off of her going, with the mum going like this, and then he pulls her through the window. Now, that wasn't the original ending, but I didn't mind it, you know, I didn't mind the ending. I actually found it interesting, but... I'm sure it was a lot more horrible in the, you know, original. Um, the film, I have to admit, the film myself, I thought was very well acted. Um, Heather Langenkamp, I always say her name wrong. She's a great actress and she's really good. And she did remind me a lot of Ashley Lawrence. Uh, Ashley Lawrence is really good in the Hellraisers. She reminded me a lot of that. And the fact that they were both very quite strong girls. I didn't realise how strong they were. Until they were pushed to their limit, you know, and that they could really defend themselves and really fight back against evil. John Saxon, what can I say? I wish he was my dad, 
you know, if I was in a Nightmare on Elm Street film, because it's completely oblivious and doesn't care. It's like this. I'll go to sleep. Don't be stupid. I don't like it. I don't think I'll think, who killed him? Who killed him, Nancy? It was Rod, wasn't it? It was Rod. So, yeah, he would have been called that to have in a Nightmare on Elm Street film, because they'd be like, hmm, he's a policeman. But all the clues are pointing to the right thing he doesn't think's happening. Her mum, who's played by Ronnie Blake, Blakely, Blackley, oh, I'm saying her name wrong again, probably. She just creeped me out through the whole film. Oh, you can sleep now. You can sleep. And I'm going to get pissed. <laughs> oh, you're going to be okay, Nancy. You know, I thought I thought she was Freddy Krueger's woman, the way she was going on when he was alive, because of the way she was acting. Oh, it was just really creepy. Um, Johnny Depp is great as Glenn, you know. What can you say? You know, he became a big star now, but back then he wasn't. And, I mean, it was he, I know he was in quite a few stuff, and he was known, but he wasn't as big as he is now, obviously. And it was great seeing him in the role. It was nice to nice see Matt Cavill in um, Hellraiser, Hellworld. Because, you know, it's always good seeing people before they were big. Because you see all the hard work they've done and what they've come from. And that's what I like. I like seeing how people work their way up. I don't like when people just turn up and be in one film and it's a big film. I like them going through their tests, you know, and their trials. Um, a friend, Christina, who was played by Amanda Wise, she was all right. She didn't last through the film long, but she was convincing. Uh, what else happened in the movie? Anyway, there's a bit, there's a bit where the, where Freddy's on top of the mother when he's on fire in the bed, and the bed's going down, right? They in the middle, and when they and when they put the cover over, it just shows the body, like the skeleton of the mum. And when the mum was going down, I was expecting the mum's a skeleton to put a middle finger up, you know, like screw yo kind of thing. As he went down, I thought that'd have been funny because the whole film, in my view, even though it was a serious horror film, this one and the other one's more comedic, this film has some good dark humor in it, and it is actually quite terrifying. I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't find it terrifying, but I mean, it was a great horror film and it was really well done, and probably one of the best. West Craven films I've actually seen recently. Because Deadly Blessing wasn't that great compared to this. Um, and, you know, I mean, depending on who you are, depends on what kind of horror you like. And I found this quite good. Um, I've seen this before. I've seen them all a long time ago. So, you know, I know what they're like. Anyway. Um, Robert England. Big, big name. Him and Doug Bradley. Hmm. Fantastic. So we need to get on to Robert England. Robert England in this movie was absolutely fantastic. You could tell he was enjoying the role. You could tell that he was loving the character. And you could tell he was just having complete amount of fun chasing them about and doing the things he had to do. Um, he's got that. And the thing with the Freddy Krueger character is he's a very evil, twisted, sadistic person. Who likes to, he's like a cat. If you ever see a cat with a mouse, they like to play with it before they kill it. There's a very really sadistic thing there where they have to hurt constantly. And that's what Freddy Krueger's like. And and uh, Robert England really brings that out perfectly. Because he's got that laugh. He's got that he's got that just that easygoing kind of Freddy Krueger kind of attitude where Freddy's doing all this really creepy, horrible stuff. But you can tell that the Robert England is actually having fun and really putting his all in it. And I think that's amazing because the film really Really, is Freddy Krueger and Nancy, and their connect, their chemistry as well on screen is really good, because she hates him and he wants to kill her. But there's also that you can also feel that kind of fun and game cat and mouse thing going on through the whole film. Is Freddy gonna get her? Is Nancy gonna win? Is Freddy gonna get her? Is Nancy gonna win? Well, you know, once you watch a lot of movies and a lot of horror movies, you know who's gonna win and who's not. Because it's kind of spelt out nowadays. But back then you'd be like. Oh, is Nancy going to do it? And now if you saw it. And you didn't know about Johnny Depp not being that big back then. You'd think Johnny Depp was going to survive the movie. Because Johnny Depp. You know. But. Yeah. So I liked Robert England. And I thought Robert England was great. 
And overall, let's show the case again. Overall, I thought number I thought Nightmare on Elm Street was a great horror film. Probably one of the better ones. I mean, it, to be honest, Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween and Friday the Thirteenth and Hellraiser One, they're all great horror movies. What ruins them is the sequels in a lot of cases. Because the sequels bring the series down. I mean, there's six sequels to this one. I mean, you can count The New Nightmare, technically, because it's Wes Craven as well. And it's in the set. So there was six, there was six sequels to this, but technically there's a seventh one, which is the remake. So I'm not going to count that in this bit, but I'll count when I've got the disc in my hand. You know, and that. So the film is great. I give it a, I give it 4.5. Highly entertaining, highly sc very scary, very intimidating, very suspenseful, and this had real, real edginess, and the characters are very effective. I really liked it. I found it a lot of fun. I'm going to watch part two in a minute, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to review that after. Um, yeah, but yeah, so 4.5. If you haven't seen that on Elm Street, one, I don't know where you've been. If you've been under a rock, if you've been somewhere where nobody knows. Come back to the world of the living. Watch a nightmare on Elm Street and don't be disappointed. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll be back with part two.